I'd like to introduce Yari Kinneret, the director of the Graphing Flagship, professor at Chalmers University of Technology, which is also the coordinator of the Graphing Flagship project. Yari, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. Um, I'll try to uh, introduce the Graphene flagship in particular to the about 75% of the, uh, today's audience who is uh, not involved in the flagship, uh, although uh, I'm glad to see that about half of the audience have, uh, has uh, heard about the flagship. So uh, what is the uh, Graphene flagship? To put it very briefly, uh, it's a very large uh, scale European research uh, initiative, long-term research initiative that uh, brings together research, innovation and collaboration. And we've been operating for uh, about six and a half years, a little more than a six and a half years. And uh, this long time span makes it possible to start with uh, very fundamental ideas uh, and uh, take the fundamental ideas from the idea stage uh, to prototypes and in, in many cases uh, to products uh, and uh, thereby uh, develop uh, new uh, advanced uh, technologies. And uh, in order to uh, uh, go the entire value chain uh, from uh, uh, ideas to prototypes to products, we of course need to uh, have a lot of different kinds of uh, competence uh, in the uh, consortium. Uh, everything from academia to uh, small and medium-sized enterprises and, uh, and uh, to, uh, to large companies. And uh, I'm quite happy to say that uh, we have been remarkably successful in that and we have established uh, ourselves as, uh, as uh, one of the world leaders in, in, in many uh, technology areas involving uh, graphene. So, uh, 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 okay, uh, we have delay with the, uh, with the controls. We were expecting a delay that scales with the number of people uh, attending, but there's a little bit more delay than we thought. So, we have just uh, started a, a new phase of the flagship. The flagship is divided into a number of phases. The current phase is, is called uh, Core 3, uh, where uh, we uh, uh, amplify our efforts in the innovation domain. Uh, but while we do that, we make sure that we still keep uh, a, a very substantial uh, fundamental uh, research component. We should remember that when we started uh, six and a half years ago, uh, graphene uh, production, for instance, was still largely based on uh, Scotch tape methods. And uh, uh, as nice as those methods are for basic research, they are not really uh, uh, something that you can uh, build an industry upon. Uh, so uh, we uh, are very aware of our roots and, uh, in the fundamental science and believe that fun both fundamental science and applied science uh, need to be um, uh, kept in the flagship, uh, even if the balance with time uh, moves uh, more towards uh, the application areas. And the, uh, this uh, slide gives a few numbers that give some kind of an indication of, uh, of the flagship. Uh, so uh, today we have 168 partners uh, in the flagship, so 168 European organizations, either universities or companies or research institutes that get funding uh, by uh, the uh, European Commission. Uh, more than 80 of them, something like 86 of them are companies. We have uh, established uh, 14 new companies uh, during the course of our, uh, our travels. Uh, we have a number of so-called associate members uh, who work very closely with us, uh, even if they don't get direct funding from the European uh, Commission. Altogether, there are something like 1,300, 1,400 people involved in the flagship, but hardly anybody works 100% of their time. So we have something like 460, 470 full-time equivalent people. So it's, uh, in terms of size, it is more or less like a medium-sized uh, size company. And I think the next uh, 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 slides describe a little bit more uh, this, uh, this current uh, situation. So uh, as I mentioned, we are now in the uh, so-called core three phase where we have uh, uh, invested about 30% of our budget uh, to these high technology uh, readiness levels projects, which target specific uh, industrial applications. Uh, and that has meant that we have uh, had to uh, renew our consortium quite a bit and bring in 
uh, lots of new companies. So something like 25% of our current partners are completely uh, new to the uh, flagship. Uh, so we'll uh, move on uh, to the uh, next uh, slide. So this gives a uh, more detailed picture of the current phase. So we have uh, uh, basic research activities, about 14% uh, of what we do. Uh, then rather broad applied research activities. Uh, uh, Vittorio already mentioned the concept of a work package. So uh, these applied research activities are divided into work packages. And we have one work package on energy storage, uh, which is uh, uh, the central one for uh, today's event. We have other work packages, for instance, on energy generation. Uh, then we have these uh, high technology readiness level projects, which we call uh, spearhead projects. Uh, there are 11 of them. Uh, they are all uh, industrially led. Uh, uh, and one of them is uh, very specific uh, to today's topic. It's about developing new kinds of batteries uh, for the uh, automotive industry, which is uh, particularly important uh, in, uh, in Europe. So if we uh, move on to the next slide. So in terms of uh, our output, uh, of course, our output is in many different directions. Uh, maybe the easiest one to uh, quantify is the research output, uh, where uh, during uh, the uh, flagship's lifetime, we have published a bit more than three and a half thousand uh, scientific publications, uh, which have been uh, cited uh, more than 110,000 times. These numbers obviously keep changing daily. Uh, we, I think every day we get several dozens, if not several hundreds uh, citations. And uh, uh, our ambition is to uh, take this uh, knowledge, this research uh, discoveries, and uh, uh, convert them to applications uh, that uh, European industries uh, can uh, build upon. And uh, sometimes uh, these things, uh, you know, go pretty quickly and sometimes there are uh, very substantial time lags, for instance, when we develop new kinds of materials, uh, so-called beyond graphene materials or their heterostructures, then the path to uh, the industrial applications is, uh, is rather uh, substantial, uh, rather long. Uh, moving on uh, to the uh, uh, innovation uh, direction, this this gets already a little bit more difficult to measure. How do you measure innovation? I mean, you can think of some uh, different uh, KPIs here, key performance indicators. One of those that we follow is, is number of patent applications. So by latest account, we have submitted uh, a little bit more than 270 uh, patent applications connected to graphene and related materials. Uh, of course, only a small fraction of them have been granted thus far because the patenting process is, is rather slow. And we have established uh, 14 spin-off companies. I think 15th is going to be established uh, this summer. Should have already been established, uh, but it was slightly delayed because of this uh, coronavirus business. And uh, these uh, companies uh, have been uh, established in many parts in Europe, in many different areas, uh, showing how diverse uh, the, the flagship is. And uh, both these new companies and the existing companies that are in, in our consortium uh, have released uh, numerous products on the, uh, on the market, dozens, I don't have the exact number, but uh, you know, several dozen uh, products uh, are now available from uh, our partners. And uh, like I think I mentioned already, we have 86 European companies in the consortium today, and there is another 35 uh, that work with us as uh, associated members. Uh, in terms of collaboration, uh, you see here a map uh, on the right that shows where our partners uh, come from. Uh, if you have good enough uh, resolution on your screen, you can even see how many uh, partners there are in, in different countries. The, the blue uh, hexagons indicate uh, partners who get funding from the European Commission, and the orange ones are these uh, associated members uh, that uh, collaborate with us. And uh, we uh, try to uh, encourage collaboration uh, through uh, many means. We have uh, business developers uh, in uh, eight specific uh, business areas that help uh, with uh, these contacts. We organize uh, activities such as the Graphene Study or conferences such as the Graphene Week, which is the 
leading European graphene conference. And uh, very recently, uh, we have started this new uh, uh, digital series, uh, uh, of which this is actually the first or second uh, incident. We organized a, a, a special event, Women in Graphene, in our own virtual universe. But, uh, uh, but this is the first research-oriented uh, 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 digital event uh, that uh, we have had. Uh, the, uh, the next uh, slide uh, gives our uh, view and vision of the future. When uh, different uh, areas are going to mature, uh, uh, so that uh, they uh, can be taken uh, out of the academic laboratories to society where they uh, create impacts. And uh, in the, uh, if we focus on the energy domain, uh, we see that uh, batteries are one of the most advanced uh, or uh, furthest advanced uh, technologies uh, in the energy domain that we see. Supercapacitors uh, are not far behind. Uh, then uh, uh, there are uh, other uh, energy generation and technologies such as uh, uh, solar cells uh, and fuel cells for transportation, which we also see are very promising. Uh, some other uh, areas which are already very mature are, of course, in composites. Most of you uh, listeners can probably go to a nearby uh, uh, store and buy at least sports equipment that have uh, graphene composites. Uh, in some uh, other areas, if you want to buy an airplane that contains graphene composites, it takes a little bit longer time just because of the, uh, uh, the, the standards uh, that have to be met in these uh, large-scale applications. Uh, even in the uh, uh, rightmost column where we, uh, we had some biomedical technologies, we see that uh, first products are already uh, coming on the market. We have now uh, two products uh, in the domain of uh, neural interfaces, which uh, where we actually uh, are faster than our own uh, own predictions, and uh, now we can move to the uh, uh, next page, uh, which is uh, a, a graph that the Gartner Corporation produces yearly uh, on uh, uh, emerging technologies. If you have any uh, sufficiently new technology, first the expectations are very very high, and you have this. Uh, uh, phase where the uh, expectations keep increasing. You think that the, the new technology is going to solve uh, all problems of the world. Uh, then after a while, you uh, start uh, seeing that reality is kicking in. Maybe it, uh, it doesn't solve all the problems, uh, but it solves some problems. And uh, then uh, finally, uh, you get to the point where the technology can actually uh, be implemented in a profitable uh, fashion uh, on commercial terms. Uh, graphene uh, technologies are such a diverse group that it's impossible to put it uh, in a single point on this curve. Uh, but uh, the, probably the center of mass is somewhere in the part where the reality is, uh, is uh, becoming recognized uh, and the hype is dying down. There are some uh, areas where uh, the development is at an earlier stage, and then there are some like composite materials that have reached uh, further uh, on, on this curve. And I think uh, I would actually like to uh, finish there with my last slide. Uh, yes, so uh, thank you. Yeah, I'd like, like to thank you, Yari. Everybody can give a virtual round of applause for Yari. Yeah. And um, in a second, we would like to share a video with you um, that's highlighting another aspect of the graphing flagship, uh, the graphing flagship's special way of increasing synergies in European research and Re industry. Rebecca, I have a, just a short question to Yari, which comes actually from one of the participants, and I think it's very re relevant mm -hmm. if Yari can offer a, a very brief uh, answer. And, it is uh, how uh, a, a, an institution or a group can be part of this graphene flagship enterprise. What okay. is the specific mechanism? Um, there are uh, two very uh, uh, different routes. One is uh, becoming an associated member, and that is very fast. Uh, that we do, uh, we add new associated members every month. So if you go to uh, our webpage, www.graphene-flagship.eu, uh, you will find how to do that. Uh, if uh, a new organization wishes to become a partner, 
uh, it is a bit more complicated uh, because uh, uh, the uh, the uh, budget that we get from the European Union uh, is assigned to specific organizations at the beginning of each phase. So uh, the current budget has uh, has been assigned. So uh, in order for us to get new uh, partners, we need to find new money. Uh, that is sometimes possible. Uh, and if we see that money is available and we need new competence, then we issue a call uh, for something called expression of interest. And uh, every European organization can respond to the call for expression of interest. Uh, and uh, then we have a, a, a transparent uh, selection mechanism uh, where uh, we pick uh, and new partners through this, this mechanism. Uh, the, uh, uh, the nature of the beast here is that it's very difficult to predict when new money will become available because that typically requires that somebody leaves the consortium, for instance. Thank you.